Jin Watt, the founder, faculty director of the MIT Mobility Initiative. Jin Watt is a professor of city and transportation planning here. Uh, he's a, he brings behavioral science to the field of mobility, something that for me as an engineer was just a huge moment in, in learning and understanding more deeply the transportation system. Uh, Jin was focused on many things, including the question of integration, so how to create a kind of seamless uh, transportation experience. Um, he also directs the transit lab here at, uh, at MIT with, with Anson. And uh, for many years, he's worked closely with organizations like Transport for London, Hong Kong, MTR, and the Chicago Transit Authority. Jin Wai, over to you. Thank you, John. Good morning. Well, first of all, follow up with what Sandy mentioned about uh, the, uh, the MIT uniqueness, right? Uh, the, the key feature of MIT is the freedom. Uh, but freedom also comes with it uh, chaos, right? <laughs> Uh, so let me share with some experience with uh, the past two years while maneuver the MIT uh, 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 system here. For now, we have about 75 senior faculty and researchers from across 12 different departments. Right? So after that, we try to say, you know, each of us is doing brilliant research, but if I offer one critique, that is, uh, there lack any sense of co coherence. Right? So we really try. We bring the 75 people together. Let's offer structure. But you can imagine that each of the 75 professors have their high egos. Uh, each of us have our own framework for looking at the world. Bring 75 people together is obviously impossible to have, right? But after two years, we managed to offer a structure, right? We should put that as three pillars. Uh, we put that as technology, data, and event, right? Technology is obvious. That's the traditional strength of MIT, right? But data is another aspect MIT has very strong, both in tradition, but also the current emphasis on. Through the operational research, IDSS, quality computing, all these aspects on that. But also we added to it value from the very beginning to ask what is transportation for? Right? Within it, we have the understanding of uh, consumer behavior, understanding of social justice in transportation, its compact impact on public health, and also the sustainability, particularly on the decarbonization effort on this. Right? So let me ask you guys a few questions to open the floor up. Uh, first of all, how many people died last year in the United States in the road traffic? How many, that's really informed. It's 42,915 people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but how many people died in the airline industry that Cindy just mentioned? Zero. Effectively, zero, right, in the commercial one. So both in transportation, both on safety issues. Such a difference. Why? Now, this is not just an abstract question. It's actually a very practical one. Along the spectrum between 43,000 to zero, where are we going to position autonomous vehicles? Where are we going to position these air, aerial, uh, urban aerial mobility? Where are we going to position these drone deliveries? This is a very technical question. Right? Insurance company have to answer, technology company have to answer, DOT have to answer, we have to position somewhere. It turns out this is not only a technology issue, but also a social construct. Right? This is one example to show that uh, transportation share this feature here. We have to bring the technology as a feasibility over the option, but the social processes actually make the decision on the trade-off. So the second panel today will discuss how safe is safe for the autonomous vehicle. Second one, many of us work on the electric uh, vehicle segments. Uh, but let me connect that to one simple fact. The fact is, uh, in the United States, all our transportation infrastructure are financed by gasoline tax. So if we are successful in electrifying our mobility system, which we really hope we do, right? So our tax base will shrink to zero. So who will finance the transportation system? That's a major question. I think as a system, we really have to answer that. Right? Here, if you look at this as a huge opportunity for business, where you can provide the data system, payment system, monitoring system, but also a great opportunity to rationalize the entire pricing system of the transportation to address really our sense of the uh, damage on the highways, the congestion impact, and also the carbon impact. So the first panel of today, we'll talk about the next generation of transportation financing. Last one, I may ask, what is a job? I'd like to think about what is a job? So how do each of us have a sense of that? Right? Economically, it's a labor for money. But sociologically, it's where one acquires meaning and I define our identity. But more physically, today, connected to transportation, each job anchors us 
in a specific time, space, and organizational arrangement. But this sh sh anchor is being shaken today. Because all of us, all of the corporations are struggling with how do we deal with this remote working? How many days come here? Where, which team should we work with? Right? This type of question will find that, that really impact the broader societal factors that impact work transportation for people. Right? Remote working in, increased from 5% overall before COVID to 30% today. Right? Six-fold impact. Right? How would the transportation system respond to those questions? This is one aspect, similar things like aging society. How do transportation respond to these broader societal issues? Here? So lastly, I'll just conclude by offer thought on the different style of thinking about transportation. And then at the IT, we have two very contrasting schools of thought. One school is the cybernetic tradition, the control theory. That's sense everything, optimize everything, control everything. The whole city look at it as a robot. Right? The males do that. And there's other aspects saying, oh, no, no, cities are messy. Right? People enjoy this spontaneous interaction. We don't want to be instrumented to our teeth, everything's being sensed. Right? So here, for this wheel, I, for a long time, I thought, oh, these two are really in reconcilable views here. Right? But now I'm more and more taking a more complementary view, in the sense that only when some component of the system are structured, are controlled, the other part of the system that can enjoy the freedom, I enjoy the messiness. Right. Finally, I also want to just uh, say a few words too about Cindy. Without Cindy, there wouldn't have been a mobile initiative. So I really thank you for offering the support. And also, many of the faculty and students supporting us. And I saw all of you guys join us of today's meeting day. So have a great interaction. Thank you, everybody.